Welcome to video number 11 in using iTrain. In this video we show the basics of using instant routes. Welcome back. We have the layout from tutorial 10 open here, but this time using the wide layout option. And that can be achieved by going up to the view menu, going down to layout and selecting the wide layout instead of the standard layout. In the previous video we completed the creation of the blocks by defining each of the block properties. This now gives us all the fundamental objects that we need to run trains automatically. Now if you recall from tutorial number 7, we saw how we could set a sequence of turnouts using track routes. This then allowed us to drive our trains manually along the selected route. Using track routes works fine, but we would need to create a track route for every combination of route that is on the layout. Even on a small layout like this, we created nine different track routes. So you can imagine the amount of work that would be involved in a much more complex layout. And driving one train manually is easy enough. But if we want to drive two or more trains at the same time, things can start to become very tricky. And track routes alone don't provide us with any visual representation of where the trains are. So we need a better way to do things. And now that we have our feedbacks and blocks in place, we can take advantage of a very special feature in iTrain called Instant Routes. So let's see how. For this tutorial, we'll use the layout in offline mode. This allows us to have a controlled environment and removes any variables that could be introduced from our physical layouts. So we will not be connected to our command station and therefore we will not be receiving feedback information from our physical layout. Instead, we can simulate the movement of the trains by manually clicking on the feedback sensors. And so that we are all using the same trains, we will use the trains that we copied over from the demo layout. So we'll take this train DB car and place it in the first throttle location by double clicking on it. And there we have it in the throttle. And on the other throttle, we'll use the steam train DB pole. So we'll click on it and drag it across to the throttle and then select the train tab. To place a train onto the switchboard, we click on the photo in the throttle and then drag it onto the required block element. Or we can select a train from the overview window, click on it and drag that onto the required block. If you want to place the train on a different block, click and drag it to the new location, then release the mouse and select set from the pop-up menu. And to remove a train from the switchboard, we hold down the shift key and then click on the train. Before we create the instant route, we need to disable any track routes along the route so that the turnouts are free. So we'll disable S1 to S3. In the block, the train name is now displayed in solid black text and the track in the block has turned red. This tells us that the train is in this block and if we were online and connected to the command station, 
we should also see that the feedback sensor was on. But we are in offline mode so we can leave this sensor off. When we first place the train on the switchboard we need to check the orientation of the train. And if we were online we would check that the orientation of the train shown in the switchboard matches the physical orientation of our train on our layout. The way we do that is by looking at the direction arrow in the switchboard and the direction arrow on the relevant train in the overview window and its matching direction in the throttle. We change direction by clicking on the arrow in the switchboard or clicking on the arrows on the overview window or in the throttle. All of the direction arrows are synchronized together so if we click on one the others will change also. The way to visualize the orientation of the train is to think of this arrow as being the direction of travel and these arrows being the gear that the train is in. In other words it's in forward gear at the moment and if we click the down arrow we're then in reverse gear. So if we select forward gear and the direction of travel is in this direction the locomotive must be at the front here and the wagons behind it and the direction of travel will be across this way. If we select reverse gear we'll see the direction arrow has changed to point in the other direction but the loco will still be in the front here with the wagons behind but the train will be moving in this direction reversing. The way to correct any mismatch between the orientation shown in iTrain compared to the physical orientation of the train on our layout is to press the shift key and then click on the direction arrow here. And now this direction arrow changes but these, the gear arrows, remain in the same position. So now if we visualize the orientation in this example we have the train in reverse gear and the direction of travel going this way. So the loco is now at this end with the wagons behind it. We've effectively flipped the train around on the iTrain switchboard. Let's shift click the arrow again to flip it around and then put it into forward gear. And now we're ready to create our instant route. Creating the instant route is really simple. We just click and drag to our destination block. When we release the mouse this pop-up menu appears and the two instant route options are the root option and the shunt option. We use the root option if the train is traveling forwards at normal speeds or if we have a train that has a control car at either end of the train and so is capable of traveling in either direction. And we select the shunt option for shunting operations or if we are reversing a train that does not have a control train at the other end of it. Just like on a real railway you would not reverse a train at normal speeds if it didn't have a control cab at the other end. And the same applies in iTrain. iTrain will not allow you to use the route option to reverse a train that has basic carriages and wagons behind it. 
we will select root and the instant root is immediately selected and we can see that the throttle has increased and we are now in automatic mode. If we were online and connected to our layout our train would now start moving under control of iTrain. But we are in the offline mode so we will simulate the movement of the train. Before we start the movement let's just see what was set when we created the instant loop. In the overview window here we can see that the train is currently in the west block which is this one and we can see that iTrain has set a destination of the east block which is this one. The blue bar in the box here indicates the throttle position for the locomotive which may not be the same as the train speed due to acceleration. The bold black text and the red track colour tell us that the train is currently in this block. The grey text colour in this box and the orange track tell us that this is the reserved block and no part of the train is currently in this block yet. The blue border to the block signifies that this block is responsible for releasing these turnouts when the whole of the train has entered this block. The orange bar in the block here tells us that the train will be stopping in this block and waiting for a predetermined time before the instant route is considered finished. Now when we first place a train on the switchboard or on the physical layout itself, iTrain doesn't know exactly where the train is. All it knows is that it is somewhere in this block so it is not currently giving any accurate positional information. To simulate the movement of the train we double click on this feedback sensor in the next block. iTrain then registers that the train has just entered the block and will then start showing the positional information as it has entered the east block. So let's do that. Let's double click on the feedback and see what happens. Double click here. We see now that the position is starting to increase. The train is now moving into this block, into the east block. We're showing its speed in the blue bar and the yellow or orange bar there that decayed away indicated that the train is going to stop in this block and that a wait period was expected. Now we are set a route going back the other way and into a different siding. Because we have a loco with basic wagons on the back of it, we will be pushing the wagons backwards so we need to be in shunt mode rather than in route mode when we reverse this train. If we try to use route mode this is what happens. So we click and drag it across to our destination block, release. If I try to select route, this is what happens. Nothing happens, nothing starts and we get a message saying that route is not possible from this position. To remove this error you go down to the throttle window and double click on the message here. So we double click on that and now the message is gone. So now we'll select it again but this time with the shunting option. So select the shunt and we see the route has been assigned. The train has automatically started moving now because iTrain knows its exact location. And to create the movement into this siding or to simulate the movement into this siding we double click on the feedback icon again. So double click on that. Now the train has transferred into this block 
and is starting the same cycle in the block. You can see it traveling, the speed has decreased, and then the wait time started and decayed away. And that is how simple instant routes are in iTrain. In the next video, we'll see how easy it is to run multiple instant routes in iTrain. We'll have a look at some new features that make instant routes even more fun to use. And we'll use those features to have a closer look at how Instant Route works and how we can work out where iTrain thinks a train is in a block. Hope to see you then. Take care.